In this video, I'll be listing my top five cheap ham radios for 2024. Sometimes it can be confusing to know which radio to buy. This is especially true if you're browsing Amazon or searching YouTube for reviews. So I'll go through my list of recommendations and I'll be weighing up the pros and the cons of each. Let's start off with number five, the Baofeng UV5R. This is a radio that has stood the test of time, although recent innovations from China have shuffled its rankings a little bit. That's why it is appearing at number five in this list. It does remain an iconic choice though for many ham radio operators and it continues to be the most successful and highest selling radio ever. Its enduring popularity can be attributed to its user-friendly interface and it makes an ideal first radio for ham enthusiasts. Programming is a breeze, especially with software such as Chirp and the UV5R covers the two main ham radio bands that are the most popular, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And in also some instances, the UV5R3 version offers a bonus tri-band feature, that being 220 megahertz, available though only in the US of A. However, with this radio, there are some caveats and the market is flooded with UV5R clones under different names and numbers, and this can lead to potential pitfalls. So to avoid getting a dud, it's crucial to stick with reputable sellers. Now, one such trustworthy option is Radio Oddity, and they offer the GT5R. This is an exact copy of the UV5R. However, this model ensures compliance with FCC spurious emission requirements. So that provides you with peace of mind to know that you are complying with the rules and also at the same price as a regular UV5R. It's something that you should consider. Now, a standout radio that secured the number four spot on our list, though it might not be everyone's cup of tea, is the TalkPod A36+. Plus. This radio boasts numerous additional features compared to standard models of radios that have been emerging from China. It has an eye-catching design available in three colours, bright green, black, and a captivating retro nostalgic-inducing clear case, as well as a colour easy-to-read display. It has 512 memory channels that are available, uh, apparently 256 per side. It has the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands available for hams, 5 watts of RF power and convenient USB-C charging. The A36 Plus even offers a version tailored to the USA GMRS band alongside an IP54 water jet rating, although I did do a dunk test and I wouldn't recommend it. Impressively, this radio also has a wideband receiver. It covers multiple band ranges, including the FM radio band, 136 to 180 MHz, 200 to 260 MHz, 350 to 520 MHz, but most notably an inclusion being the AM aircraft band at 108 to 136 MHz. However, like many radios from China, perfection is a little bit elusive. The A36 Plus faced criticism for dirty transmit issues. It had problems with spurious emissions exceeding specified levels on the VHF band. Yet, on UHF, 70 centimeters, and the GMRS bands, these emissions remain well within required levels, and there's even a GMRS locked version which holds FCC approval. So, why have I included a radio with documented spurious emission issues in this top five list? Well, really, it all comes down to intention. Many viewers bought the TalkPod A36 Plus solely for listening purposes, particularly if they wanted to listen to local aircraft on AM and they had no plans for transmitting. Several viewers contacted me to say that they bought the TalkPod to listen to NOAA weather alerts or their local aircraft on AM and had no intention of transmitting at all on the unit. A few viewers even worked at airports and they were far more comfortable potentially losing a $50 odd radio than something much more expensive. I mean, sure, the quality might not be exactly the same as a high-end model, but it works for them. In the end, the TalkPod A36 Plus might not match the quality of premium models, but for those who prioritise specific functionalities and are content with maybe just listening, it gets the job done. At number three, we have the Anytone AT778UV. This is also known as the Retivus RT95. And as you can see, this is a mobile radio. This is not a standard handheld. This radio is designed as a robust 25 mobile unit for vehicles or even as use as a base station. The Anytone caught my attention for several reasons. 
The easy to read color screen, accessible menu layout and impressive audio quality just to name a few on both transmit and receive makes it super impressive for the price. One unique feature is the ability to rotate the entire radio 180 degrees and you can flip the screen. This provides flexible mounting options and this is something that you don't normally get or see in other mobile radios. It has support for chirp programming, 200 memory channels and a super receiver. The radio maintains spectral cleanliness on both VHF and UHF, ensuring reliable performance there. However, it is worth noting that its hot receiver may face challenges in high RF environments with potential intermodal interference issues, although for most users this won't really pose a real problem. Overall, it's an excellent option for those looking to upgrade from their handheld radios and gain a little power boost. So, do you agree with my list so far? If I've missed any potential models that you think should have been included in the list, then let me know in the comments below. So let's go back to handhelds now. The number two spot is taken by a not so economically priced unit. However, you get what you pay for and you get some super features that you don't get in other cheaper radios from China with the Waxon KGQ10H. The Waxon or Ocean, I'm not sure which one it is actually, KGQ10H is a quad band super heterodyne radio receiver. It's capable of transmitting on the 1.25 meter, 2 meter, 6 meter and 70 centimeter ham radio bands. Its receiver spans multiple bands, 50 to 54 megahertz, 108 to 174 megahertz, 220 to 225 megahertz, 320 to 480 megahertz and 714 to 999 megahertz. It has even more features with 999 programmable memory channels. It has a crossband repeat function, dual PTTs, simultaneous dual channel receive and transmission up to 6 watts of output power. Now it's even IP67 rated for dust and waterproof protection and yes, I did do a dunk test on this. It also has built in a USB-C port for charging which means you can get away from those dodgy Chinese charging units. I mean, I could keep going on and on about the features of this radio but you should really check out my full review. It's a pretty cool little unit. There's also a GMRS version too although that doesn't have the full feature set that the ham radio version does. The thing that impressed me the most about this unit is the receive audio. It's insanely good and it has a better front end on the receiver for avoiding intermod and interference using the SuperHet design. Of course, the downside is the price. And finally, number one on the list, it's a radio that has exploded in popularity and will probably one day become the new Baofeng UV5R, if it hasn't already. That is the Quanchang UVK5, and that surprised everyone when it was released. It has a BK4819RF chip, allowing reception out of the box from 50 megahertz to 600 megahertz. Now, it didn't take long for someone to discover that this chip can actually receive much further, and hackers developed firmware to allow reception, although limited in practicality, from 18 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. Of course, it didn't stop there. Quite a few developers came up with their own custom firmwares, allowing easier to understand menus, modifications and hacks to the radio. Just recently, there's even been firmwares for improved AM aircraft reception, APRS and messaging capabilities, and even SSTV transmission built right into the radio. Now, RF-wise, the radio is relatively clean on transmit. It performs much better than other similarly priced radios, but don't think that you can transmit outside the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. It just doesn't work effectively, or legally for that matter. Now there's far too many things here to mention that haven't already been covered before, but if you don't have a Quan Chang UVK5, you need to get one, just to play around and experiment with. Now I've comprehensively reviewed, tested and done overviews on all of these radios. If you want to see those, then there is a link in the description and in the pinned comments below, and they will also appear here on screen.